Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the reptilian den. I'm Elle and this is Den. I don't, I don't know how we usually. Uh, so recently, uh, Elle was part of a contest. Contest? Challenge by Josh's Frogs and Vision Products. Vision Products. And because of that, we had the opportunity to get our hands on some of their materials, which was kind of exciting. So we were able to make a background. Yeah, this is the very first naturalistic foam background that we have ever done in a tank. And it was a lot of fun. We did it together. <laughs> it wasn't just me. This video is not sponsored by Josh's Frogs, but in fact, it's sponsored by us, me and her. She's somewhere around here. If you didn't know already, we're on Etsy and we have lots of reptile related products, including tongs. We have little boots that lift up the tank so that you can put the heat pad under and they're not, the cords aren't getting all frayed up and wrist damage or anything like that. We have feeding ledges, tons of stickers and decals. If you wish to support us, you should definitely support yourself and check out our Etsy. Lsreptiles.etsy.com. So without further ado, let's build that background. Before we did anything, we made sure to wipe everything down with alcohol. This makes sure everything sticks. We built this entire background using the Josh's Frogs background kit. First thing we're gonna do is lay out all the pieces. Beforehand, I drew a picture of the general idea of where I wanted everything to be at. I attempted to design this in a way so that the uh, root system of the small tree would actually wrap around the log hide. Since this is gonna be a 3D background, these objects will actually be built into the background. So the Josh's Frog kit that we purchased came with two of these great stuff foam cans and we used all of it when we were designing the back. This stuff does expand so be cautious when using it. I made sure to also get quite a bit of this foam behind the driftwood so that everything would stay in place. Many people when using this kit actually use it on the sides as well but since this was our first time we just wanted to do the back. Once you get all the foam laid down you need to allow for a couple days of drying time before you can start cutting everything away. Here I just used a razor blade to cut away the excess foam to get it to the ideal shape. And then it was my turn. The first thing I did was took a shop vac and vacuumed this thing out really, really good. I didn't want any of the loose particles of the styrofoam to find its way into the silicone and just make it all look lumpy and weird or for debris to be falling off while I was trying to spread silicone. So it is super important to just make sure that you get all of that off. And you can also see that I'm scraping at the top. Great. I definitely should have used painter's tape or something to block that off because foam did accidentally get up in that grate and it doesn't come off. So just a word of caution. And then once all of that was cleaned up and I verified that this was the shapes, the nooks and crannies that I wanted it to be, I could start siliconing it. Big advice here, definitely make sure that you use gloves for this. Silicone is the worst thing to have all over your skin. This project involves you touching silicone and smearing it all around. So definitely make sure you have those gloves on. Our particular kit came with two tubes of this aquarium safe black silicone, which was plenty to do this project. And then I have my own caulk gun for this. The kit does not come with one of these. You will need one of these if you're going to do this. These are also my gloves. So make sure that you pick both of those things up if you're planning to do this project. Caulk guns are super inexpensive. They're only a few dollars at any hardware store. The kit also came with cocoa cradle. This is going to be used to press into the wet silicone to give it that naturalistic look. I highly suggest using one hand to do the smearing of the silicone and your other hand to press the cocoa fiber into the silicone or else you're going to have a giant sticky mess. This part does take a very long time. It is important that you apply the silicone in pretty small sections and you make sure that when you are smearing this around, you are getting all of the pieces of the foam because we want this foam to be sealed in and completely waterproof. You wanna make sure that the area that you are siliconing stays wet when you are pressing the cocoa cradle into it and you need to make sure that the cocoa cradle is completely dry. This is going to ensure that it sticks the best and it all stays in place or else you're going to have a situation where Cocoa Cradle is just falling off of the background and we definitely don't want that. I just poured with my hand some of the Cocoa Cradle over the silicone and then just gently pressed it in. Don't press too hard or else you will have silicone smearing out of the areas that you pressed. And then as I go, I'm just tilting the 
entire enclosure up on its side just to ensure that I'm not missing any spots. That way I can shake off all the excess and I can see exactly what I'm doing. Because of the sheer amount of silicone that you are using, this project needs a very long time to dry. It took over a week, maybe going on two weeks, just for all of the smell of silicone to not be present in the tank. And you need to make sure that there is no smell of silicone present in the tank before you put animals in there. Again, this entire project takes a very long time. So if you are going to do something like this, please plan accordingly. Just know that you are not gonna be able to put your animal in this tank for a couple of weeks. And this is it, this is the finished product. We are super, super, super happy with it. This is the first time we had ever done a background like this. And we think that it definitely made the entire tank look more naturalistic. And that's it. We, well, I mean, I really like how it turned out. I don't know about her. We're definitely gonna be doing more of that in the future, I think. I mean, now we're starting to look at other tanks and now they just look bare in comparison. Remodel. This project did take a lot of time. Like I mentioned earlier, it took several weeks to let everything dry and air out and all of those things took a lot of time. So if this is something that you are looking into, make sure that you have ample time before you are putting your animal into that tank. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of fun doing this and we will be doing another one of these, maybe even bigger, very soon. And if you like this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and ring that little bell for notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Oh, my reptilians, welcome and welcome back. Wait, to the reptilian den of time. So if this is, actually maybe that should go at the end. That should go at the end, okay. I thought we were at the end. No, this was the beginning. <laughs> oh. Clap. All right, so, uh, oh, what did I say? Uh, I had this whole thing in my head and now it's just gone. <laughs> L's Reptiles on Etsy.com. L's Reptiles. L's Reptiles Etsy.com. L's Reptiles dot Etsy.com. L's Reptiles dot Etsy.com. Dot Etsy. L's Reptiles dot Etsy. L's Reptiles dot. But I had a lot of fun doing this and. But I had a lot of fun doing this and we will be. <laughs> I was doing something weird. <laughs> I was just fix it real quick. I don't know what, uh, but the camera's just throwing me off. Is it left or is it left? You want your bloopers? <laughs> you good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is where you usually say if you like this video. And if you like this video, and if you like this video, bell for notifications. Bye.